Okay, so this is a going to be a brief uh, and very amateur video on um, some of the things that we do uh, in using calipers to measure an echocardiogram. This is a typical view that we'll start out with uh, that we might want to measure wall thicknesses or chamber sizes. Um, so this is a two-dimensional measurement is what we'll do with these calipers. Um, and so I'll freeze this image and then I'll scroll back here to a certain part of the cardiac cycle. There we go. And then I can pull up calipers to measure the thickness of this wall. Okay. And this chamber dimension here. Just spatial measurements. And this last wall here. So that's one example of things that we'll do with calipers two dimensionally. Um, just to orient you, this is uh, the top of the screen where the transducer is, and this is deeper into the body, just like sonar. We send sound waves down into the body, it hits things and comes back up to the transducer up here, and these are centimeter markers, so every two and a half of these or so is about an inch. There are other two-dimensional structures that we uh, can measure. Also, the black tube there to the right is uh, the aorta, and we can again freeze that and um, scroll to a particular part of the cardiac cycle and pull up just some calipers to measure the diameter of the aorta. This image is a Doppler image which tells us velocities of blood flow uh, and tissues uh, in the body. So to orient you to this screen um, this line right here represents uh, zero velocity. Uh, going this way, this is time, and going down, this is velocity. So this is velocity over time. Uh, a typical measurement that we will do with the calipers is just a single point peak velocity measurement. It also gives us a peak, uh, it's not showing up well in the video, it also gives us a peak gradient. We can derive gradients from these velocities. Another thing that we might do is actually trace this velocity profile. So I would start here and I would just trace around it and from this we would get a velocity time integral the velocity and the time under this curve and it would give us a, a VTI which we can see up off to the left of 77.2 and from this we can calculate valve areas and things of that sort. So this is another Doppler profile. This is happens to be through the mitral valve but another measurement that we can do is measure um, times and slopes of things. Um, so if I go over here I can measure this peak E wave here and the peak A wave. So we can just do a couple of peaks. We can also measure the deceleration time, or the time it takes for this slope of this first part of this profile here to reach the baseline. We can see that the deceleration time for this patient was 289. So that's another thing we can do with the calipers in Doppler. Okay, for the last thing, I'm going to take you through just this uh, patient's study that I actually measured. These are the still frame images that I measured. So here's the wall thicknesses and chamber sizes that we talked about before. That's diastole and this is in systole. This is a measurement of the LVOT that we'll use for the continuity equation, which uh, allows us to calculate the aortic valve area. So we may have them measure this, for example and then measure two other Doppler profiles to calculate the area. There's just a simple peak. This is actually a, a volume. What one does is you start here and you trace around. This is a left atrium. This is a chamber. And stop there. And then we define the length of this uh, chamber. And from that, we can derive a volume, which is right here of 71. I don't know if we'll be able to do that um, or not. 
This is another volume looking at the left ventricle. From this we can calculate uh, ejection fraction and um, how well this chamber is working. That was diastole and this is systole. Here's the mitral valve that I measured showing the peak E and the A and that deceleration time. There's another peak velocity. These are some velocity time integrals that I measured for um, uh, calculating the aortic valve area. And here is a continuous wave profile of the aortic valve. This is flow going through the valve. So it's another velocity time integral. Those are the three things that I would need to calculate the aortic valve area. The LVOT diameter, the pulsed wave of the LVOT, and then this, the continuous wave of the LVOT. And from that we can solve for the aortic valve area. And that you don't need to know about. <laughs> so uh, that's everything, and um, I hope this helps. Thanks a lot.